Okay, after a little bit of reality, dose of reality, we're going to move to another kind of reality um, and talk about the benefits of the games for patients and for caregivers and healthcare providers by a um, actually very accomplished gamer herself. So, Julia? Thank you, Robin. I appreciate it. I love being uh, part of the disruptive women. Um, and I'm excited today because I get to talk about the two things I think I'm very, very passionate about, and that is um, promoting health and wellness, which I think everyone can get behind. But also, I'm, I'm passionate about having fun. And I always say, if you're not having fun, you're not doing it right. So, um, you know, all this doom and gloom healthcare stuff, um, uh, I, I find it interesting, um, there's been a lot of studies done on play and the importance of play. And when people even think about healthy gaming, they, they focus on children or they say, you know, how are, how my, how's my five-year-old going to use this? But play is an essential element to everyone, whether you're one-year-old or 99 years old. And the studies have shown that play is essential because it contributes to our cognitive, physical, social, and emotional well-being. And if we aren't playing, if we're having taking ourselves a little bit too seriously, um, uh, that can be a problem. And it can be a problem that affects our health. So if you start having health problems, start looking at how much you're playing. And I think if you start playing just a wee bit more, uh, not using the term wee uh, particularly there. You know, it's funny that Nintendo calls all of their stuff, the, the wee brain age, um, the wee fit, they do call it productive entertainment. So they believe that they're in the entertainment business. I, I think they are not wanting to rush into the healthcare business. But the reality is, is that um, these these healthy games can actually be a great a great thing. Um, initially, I was going to do a PowerPoint because they're so much fun and um, <laughs> tell you a lot of facts and figures. Uh, uh, I'm with a company, iConnecto, and we are the leading uh, syndicator, publisher, and developer of healthy games. Uh, we have produced a market report where we've identified that there are over 600 healthy games out there um, from everything from that can treat wellness to chronic condition management. There's over 500 um, mobile and iPhone applications you can download now that have some kind of health benefit relationship. Um, there's also uh, lots and lots of medical training games and simulations that doctors are, and physicians are using as well as part of their training. Um, but rather than bore you with the facts and figures, I wanted to just tell you a couple of stories, my experiences since getting involved in this. And my background is in the gaming and simulation world, but for the most part I've dealt with um, DOD and Homeland Security and their use of games and simulations to do their missions. And I'm very excited to be now um, embedded in the healthcare space. Um, but I was lucky enough last October to uh, be invited to um, the Ascension Health, which is the largest Catholic nonprofit healthcare system in the country, I was invited to their annual convocation. And we set up a booth on healthy gaming to show how it might affect them. Well, we had the Wii Fit there. And even before I went to this conference, I was imagining um, many of the attendees there are Catholic sisters. And, and so I knew that we were going to have the Wii Fit and the hula hoop action. And um, I can't tell you, all of the Catholic sisters who were just, they could not get enough hula hooping. <laughs> and then I had the Nintendo Brain Age, and they were all like, just, come on, I'm, I'm sure I'm less than 60s, so I, gotta, I gotta retake that. And, um, you know, so I said, you know, fun is for everyone. And, and if, if we can get hundreds of Catholic sisters um, doing a hula hoop action, I do have a video, but I was told I, something bad would happen if I put it up on YouTube, so I <laughs> can't do that. Um, but uh, this category called Exert Games um, really can get people up and moving. And, um, you know, even just not, you might not call it a game, but there's um, devices like I wear my, my little pedometer. I can't go to bed unless I have 12,000 steps, so if you see me walking around. Um, <laughs> Uh, but there are, the thing about gaming is it adds that competitive element. Um, and I think that's a real motivational factor, and that's the social factor. I mean, Web 2.0 is huge because it's, it's linking, you know, people with people. And, and if we can get people to get motivated to start moving or, you know, beat each other's score on the hula hoop challenge, um, it's going to benefit us all. I mean, we are going to be healthier. It is going to lead to prevention. 
we are going to um, to probably uh, you know be healthier at the end of the day. Um, I was going to talk a little bit, and uh, Glenda mentioned this already, about uh, healthy games can provide some measurable benefits for people with chronic conditions. So there are asthma games, there's diabetes games, there's cancer games, um, and Hope Labs Remission is probably the poster child for being a high quality game. The game cost $5 million in development costs and $5 million of their own personal time, so we're not talking something cheap. But it's a uh, first person shooter game. Uh, where you do take Roxy the nanobot inside the body to shoot at cancer cells. And you learn these, these missions. Um, some people have lymphoma, some people have different forms of cancer. And um, what they, interestingly enough, they have tested to see whether or not they're, they're, they, kids that play this game adhere better to their drug schedule. Um, but really, I do think that there is a positive outcome. All the kids reported that played this game, they felt that they now had control over this illness that they before felt like was taking them over. And it empowered them to feel like they, they could actually kill these cancer cells. And they are doing future studies right now with remission to show whether or not there is this mind-body connection where if you can visualize shooting cancer cells, does that actually kill the cancer cells in your body? So that's very exciting. Um, Let's see, another thing that really touched my, uh, uh, the Robert Wood Johnson Foundation has been um, promoting this Games for Health conference. That This year is June 10th and 11th in Boston. So um, uh, one of the things that I heard about last year which really touched my heart is a lot of returning vets coming back to Walter Reed were coming back without limbs. And um, the physical therapist wanted to give them something that would make them motivated to do their physical therapy and kind of lift their spirits. Well, one of the things that they asked for was a one-handed guitar hero. And if any of you are familiar with Red Octane's Guitar Hero game, it's very popular. And, um, but it usually requires two arms. So uh, Ben Hackerton actually um, retrofitted Guitar Hero to be played with a foot pedal. So that now these one-armed vets, could, disabled vets, could actually play Guitar Hero. And it really boosted their spirits, which then led to boosting their ability to do more physical therapy and, and recover. So I think that's very exciting. On the other side, I have two examples of, of um, healthy gaming in the professional sector. Um, one is that there have been studies that show that by playing these games, particularly the games that provide, uh, require motor skills, it actually makes better surgeons. So Arizona State University conducted a study using Nintendo's Wii Marble Mania. And they then, after performing this, or playing with Wii Marble Mania for a certain number of times, they then had them perform a simulated surgery. And surgeons who played showed a 48% improvement in surgical technique. Um, we were requested by a hospital up in New Jersey to kind of come and look at how gaming might be used as a device of testing residents before they come into the hospital system to see if they have those skills. Because when you graduate and you've got your medical degree, they don't test to see what kind of good gamer you are. Um, and, and that can directly relate to some of these surgical techniques. Another exciting area that we're working on right now in the brain, brain fitness area is what we're calling uh, brain exercising for medical professionals to improve uh, quality and compliance and risk management. Uh, Quantros, which is a leading medical software developer, develops software that tracks errors within hospital systems. And they gave me the statistic yesterday that 70 to 80 percent of hospital errors have some kind of human factor related to it. And um, this means that by exercising certain cognitive skills, like executive function, visual, spatial, memory skills, you might actually be able to reduce the number of errors that are happening in the hospitals. Um, so again, we're, we're looking at whether or not we can add that to the training regimen. So it's not all about just your medical knowledge, which can also be built into a game. We're looking at using Jeopardy games and other things to test people's uh, medical knowledge, particularly in areas like uh, look-alike, sound-alike, drug types of problems. Um, but by playing these cognitive fitness games, which we have a lot of them um, back there, you can kind of test out whether or not that will actually reduce the number of hospital errors as they occur. So just in closing and to summarize, um, why am I so pumped up about healthy gaming? One, I think they're fun and engaging. Um, they add that social competitive element, which I think will really uh, be a boost to prevention and exercise and changing behavior. 
Um, so they can help promote healthy behavior. They can help people with disabilities. They can help improve the skills of medical pro professionals. And they can help reduce errors related to human factors. And I really do hope you'll stay and play. Anyone who wants to know their brain age, um, if you want to do the hula hoop, I'm sure we can swap out. But we have this great um, Wii outdoor challenge thing right there. But um, So come see us afterwards. We also have the uh, uh, learning for children games, as, as was mentioned before, as well as remission. So anything you might want to see. Also, um, we have a website, gamingforhealth.com, which is our leading blog and, uh, and kind of constant news source about the healthy gaming area. So thank you. Thank you, Julia.